Hi all, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Monday, February 26, 2018, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. Our topic today is an update on uh, Cupix, C-U-P-I-X, a, a 3D virtual tour platform. Um, uh, joining me in the studio today, I guess our virtual studio, is uh, uh, Cupix Director of Sales, Scott Anderson. Hey, Scott. Hey, everybody. Good to see you, Scott. Great to see um, you. Uh, Scott was on our program on uh, uh, back in November, gave us a, a really great overview. It was kind of like either Cupix for newbies or uh, Cupix versus Matterport. It was really a really in-depth show. It was about two hours. Um, uh, uh, Scott, we'll try not to go two hours on you today, but I, I, we had so many questions and things to cover. So today is really about what's changed since, uh, late November, 2017. And, uh, Scott, I know you had a lot of news that you wanted to give us an update on. So why don't you give us the headlines of what you're going to cover during the program today? Sure. I'd love to do that. Thank you, Dan, for having me in uh, again. And we have been working uh, tire tirelessly nonstop with new updates on uh, Cupix that have been coming direct from the users of Cupix. These cover uh, the real estate industry, the construction industry, facilities management, um, rentals, all, all sorts of different uh, spaces and industries. So uh, the features that we're bringing to the table are ones that uh, come from the user base. And what we're going to uh, cover today are the ones that uh, were released uh, basically this uh, this February. Uh, so new in February we have. So couple, February 2018, this yeah, month. Uh, just to, last week. Um, okay. Uh, we had a newsletter announcement, um, and the things that we're that we're uh, really going to cover here are videogrammetry support, uh, which means that uh, users C are come, now come back to it. Just let's just li list them off, just so everybody knows what's coming up on the program, and then we'll do a deep dive on each. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, Sure. Yeah. Video grammatry support, meaning you can upload videos and create tours from videos. A 3D BIM support, uh, which means that you can upload 3D CAD models. That could be an IFC, a Revit, um, or a SketchUp model, for example, and view those side by side with a Cupix tour. Uh, we're going to uh, highlight animation programming for a guided tour, which means that you can uh, program keyframes. So if you're um, uh, if you want to animate uh, some tour, then you can do that. Uh, we've got an update to our uh, social media posts. So now if you want to post to Twitter or Facebook, you can uh, customize the layout. And then that goes on to social media with all of your uh, branding and cover images. We have an in-browser uh, blur tool, which saves, saves a lot of time for uh, post processing photos so you can blur directly in the browser so if you got a tour and somebody's got a, a face that is, just isn't isn't the right uh, right right look then you can modify that um, we have a new workspace collaboration uh, feature uh, that we'll uh, we'll look at uh, that uh, supports enterprise collaboration so if you're working with different uh, clients or colleagues and it's much more suitable for that kind of uh, interaction uh, we have a, a YouTube embed feature inside of uh, the tours. So now you can embed an actual YouTube video or multiple YouTube videos. So we'll go and uh, go ahead and look at how that works. And then we have uh, obfuscate uh, feature, uh, which uh, you, you'll see inside of the um, in the tour, but it helps you uh, hide things that um, need to be hidden in 3D. Really great for uh, setting up links and other 3D objects in your tour. So those are a couple of things. And then we will also want to touch on the uh, um, permissions and confidentiality and ownership of uh, tour data. And maybe we could just hit on that real quick. Um, if, if that sounds okay to you. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I, I should let our uh, viewers know that, that presently Cupix is in beta. Uh, it's uh, and while it's in beta it's totally free. Uh, and to uh, check out Cupix, you would go to. Uh, head over to Cupix on Google search and you'll find it uh, cupix.com. C-U-P-I-X.com, C-U-P-I-X.com, and you can sign up to be part of the free beta. Right. Correct. Yeah. Just enter in your email address and you're in. Uh, so on uh, confidentiality and, and data ownership, uh, the way that uh, the, the company has been uh, built is with uh, guys that have come from the aerospace and automotive um, and uh, power plant and uh, really, really confidential type of industries. Um, so we've uh, spread our wings 
in in this area and have built a platform that's really really advanced for working with um, all of the industrial needs that come to play and these also satisfy a lot of the real estate um, and you know non not quite as technical applications um, but in terms of confidentiality and data ownership we're bringing that um, that background with us so in the aerospace industry if if you share your data with a, uh, a file sharing site by no means do they expect to own that own that data um, so we, we come with the same perspective on data ownership data confidentiality and data sharing um, you the user control who has access to the data you can you the user control who can see the data and um, yeah if you want to if you want to share it you can if you don't want to share it then um, then it doesn't get out um, we have password protection uh, high bit encryption well all the all the usual things that you expect at a bank uh, a bank teller or um, working with banking data, we employ the same kind of uh, confidentiality and protection of the uh, customer's data. Mm -hmm. And just for clarification, I, uh, I'm the content creator. Uh, I'm at some point paying uh, Cupix for my account. Uh, I own all my intellectual property, copyright, can decide whether to make it public, private, can make it public, can make it unpublic. Um, uh, can share it privately. I have complete control over my content, what I do with it, uh, who gets to see it. Yeah, correct. You're the you're the owner of the owner of the data, so you can do what you want with that data. Okay, great. Thanks for that clarification. Let, let's go into your list. You got a you got a lot of exciting things to talk about. Okay, yeah, for sure. And let me just turn off. I'm getting I'm getting buzzed here, so let me turn this off so that we don't uh, get okay. disrupted. Here. So uh, let's start with something. Um, Kind of more on the exciting level, um, and that's 3D uh, BIM support. And typically, if you look at any of the past uh, topics on Cupix, you upload photos, or you upload video. Now we can support video, and you've got this immersive tour. So you take photos of of the office, you take photos of the museum, and then you can walk through the tour just like a matter of a tour or Google Street View. With 3D BIM support, now you can upload and import uh, CAD uh, data. And when you have that CAD data uh, imported, you can navigate and see that data um, as, you're, as you're moving around. So let me share my screen so that you can see the same thing that I'm looking at. Terrific. And just to be a little a little safe here, we're, I'm going to be showing some videos and interleaving it with um, some tours as needed. Um, but I'm going to start with this video. So this excuse video, me, do you have any audio on the video? Uh, yeah, you got the audio that I'm going to narrate in this case. But the uh, videos that we have online are going to be ones that have audio built into them. If you if you want us to hear the audio, then just before you share your screen, there's a button at the bottom. It says optimize the audio coming from uh, your desktop. OK, um, well, in this case, we won't need that, but good to know. Um, OK, so we've got uh, 3D BIM and CAD asset support inside of Cupix. And like I mentioned, um, the typical understanding of what Cupix can do is it's working with the Cupix store. So on the left hand side, you've got a Cupix store. It's taken from photos. You upload the photos. We automatically assemble all the constellations and then you have a tour that you can walk through. Um, with the 3D CAD support, you can bring in a CAD model and align that perfectly to uh, the tour on the left. So Did you, you want to show us that? At the tour on the left and the tour on the right. Well, that's what that's what's being shown right here. Um, uh, so I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't think I see it. So. Okay. Uh, it could be uh, wrong. Okay, let's see that one more time. Yeah. Okay. Now, now we're starting to see your screen. So this is the first time that we're seeing your screen, Scott. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying uh, what you're seeing. Okay. So on the left, you're like I mentioned, you associate the typical uh, Cupix tour where you take photos. The constellations are automatically uh, computed, and then um, you've got a tour that you can navigate through. Um, but what's new is that you can bring in the CAD data. So this could be CAD data from Revit or SketchUp or IFC. And um, what you can see pretty clearly, I think, in this view is that um, you have a 360 uh, pano here. That's what we, what we call a 360 tour. There's 360 data behind it. And then on the right-hand side, you have the actual um, a CAD file that's brought in um, from CAD. Um, these are aligned uh, to one another. So as you navigate uh, through the tour, you can see different uh, perspectives in the tour. You can choose a, um, an asset. Um, from the asset library, and this could be a IFC 
file, it could be a SketchUp uh, file, or it could be a Revit file, very popular uh, CAD formats. We, we will support more if the industry calls for it, if the industry asks for it, but these are these seem to be the most popular right now, but there's a, a lot of uh, flexibility that we have. In terms was, of there, was there an opportunity to overlay the BIM on top of the reality of what actually exists? Oh uh, yeah, that's um, what I'm what I'm presenting here is what we've got. So um, you can see on the left hand side. Um, I'll, I'll open it up so that you can we can dive in a little bit more depth. Okay. Uh, yeah. So here's a few examples of the different CAD formats. So this is a Revit uh, Revit file format. Uh, you can view it inside of this uh, side of the tour, rotate that around, and then also see um, all the all of the geometry there. Okay, and then if you have floor plans, of course, you can uh, work with those inside in terms of uh, CAD assets as well. Okay, um, so that's that's what we've got. And then what I'm gonna open up here is a, a sample of our uh, users. The, the first challenge is to take photos in the right way. Yeah. So uh, Scott, while you're looking for your digital assets to call up, I, I, I'll mention for, for anyone that uh, that Cupix may be a little bit new, uh, what camera do you use? The, the answer is uh, any 360 camera, or if you want to use a DLR, DSLR camera and stitch the images together and then upload them. But essentially um, from a low end to a high end 360 uh, camera, and then uh, through some magic of photogrammetry, and then I think Scott, you're gonna talk about videogrammetry as well, is that uh, what we know for, for many of us, what we know of Matterport is can actually be created uh, with this process of photogrammetry uh, uh, and using any 360 camera. So you want to use a Ricoh Theta S or a Ricoh Theta V or a Insta 361 um, or an Insta 360 Pro, uh, you know, whatever your budget, whatever camera that you want to buy uh, is going to seamlessly work with the uploading to to the Cupix platform. Yeah, and of course, uh, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera on a panel rig is, um, of course, the way to get the highest quality panel photos, as I'm sure you'd agree. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but for some of these construction cases, it's very convenient to hold a 360 camera up above your head. And uh, to add to your point, any camera that you hold above your head and walk around uh, a, a space, you can collect and create this, this type of tour. Um, so in this case, what we're seeing, and you can see the screen, correct, Dan? Yes. Uh, we've got 105, 107 photos uh, that were uploaded to Cupix. Um, so the magic of Cupix is you take these photos, you upload them to Cupix, and then you get this tour. The email uh, comes so in. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused there. So were, the, were these pre-stitched images, or are these actually uh, photos, meaning they're 360s? Oh, yeah. No, these are 360 photos, um, right? Got it. That'll work. Thank you. Right. So 360 photos, you upload the 360 photos and you receive the, you receive the tour. Thank you. Um, the uh, tour is uploaded and then we have a floor plan uh, view uh, that we can look at. And this has the uh, drawing underlaid uh, below it. Um, so in the absence of the drawing, we would just have the photo locations uh, that are shown here. But with, um, with the photo locations and the drawing, it's very easy to place uh, the tour directly on top of the floor plan. And then from there, we can navigate to uh, the review uh, review tab. And what we're looking at is a first person uh, view side by side with the uh, BIM, BIM model. Um, so now we've got a perfect view of uh, the CAD and we've got a perfect view of um, the tour. And we can see and navigate to any, any place um, within the CAD and the tour and we've got uh, basically a synchronized uh, position between what's there and what's not there. Um, so these are aligned from left to right and this is uh, this is a typical way to work uh, when you're developing CAD and doing reverse reverse modeling or you're trying to uh, build a BIM model um, from, uh, from, from data is to have um, a visual on the left of the as-built and then on the right uh, have a, a visual of the CAD uh, CAD model that you're working with. So we, we might actually be talking about going two directions. So uh, first, if the space on the left was going to be renovated, the architect would typically come in, take a lot of photos, take a lot of measurements, 
in this case, uh, using the, um, the, the Cupix 3D tour model on the left, the architect is able to, uh, in, a, in a faster process, reconstruct the space uh, before the uh, new design process takes place. Is that a uh, one scenario for workflow? Sure, yeah, that's a, that's a great scenario. Yeah, architects, uh, construction. Um, and then yeah. in, the, in the second case, I, I would imagine that the, the BIM model may come first, then the space gets built, and as it's being built, the photographer could be shooting uh, uh, the what we would call, yeah, let's call it built. Yeah, we yeah we we kind of leave it up to the uh, discretion of the architect and the construction uh, person. But the, the uh, but in, in in this case, what what that would mean is the uh, the the architect essentially the project manager on the building could double check that the that what is being built is actually what the BIM model called for being built. Sure. Yeah, that's a great uh, great case, and there certainly could be uh, certainly could be more. Okay. So I, I, you know, I would say for, for, for many of us that are uh, uh, Matterport photographers um, and we might be used to shooting residential real estate or commercial real estate, all that can be done within the Cupix platform. Scott is showing us that the next level of, uh, of uh, the ability of using it in, in, in it, uh, for architects, engineers, and in construction. Uh, and this is a great example of side-by-side -side comparing a BIM model with the actual photography uh, either to construct the BIM or to make sure that the actual uh, building is being constructed to the BIM. Uh, yeah, so you got the side by side, and we're having something funny here with the. Uh, it must be it must have to do with the screen uh, screen sharing, but yeah, I could imagine that our bandwidth and having what we're doing is uh, so uh, completely understand and appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, so that's. Uh, that's topic uh, topic one, and then uh, topic uh, two. We'd like to show. Um, and uh, apologize, I'm going to have to pause the screen a little bit. To that's fine. If you want to come out of the screen share, that's just fine. While you're doing that, Scott, I'll, I'll let our, our virtual studio audience know that if you have a question, uh, just either simply type that you'd like to be on screen, or just type your question, and I'll see if I can feed that into Scott while he's doing his uh, taking us through uh, Cupix. Scott, you're still in screen sharing. Did you want to come out of screen sharing, get to your next shot, and then go back into it? I apologize uh, for that, um, but can you see the... Uh, yeah, we're on your screen now. We're looking at um, an Equirec um, in video. I want to say in video. Okay, yeah. So the next topic is videogrammetry. And with videogrammetry, you can show... Um, you can upload 360 videos. Uh, they're in the Equi rectangular format, as as you mentioned. Um, so the Equi Rec um, uh, format just goes directly up to Cupix. So you take the um, take the Equi Rec data, you upload it to Cupix. You get an email that says that the tour is ready. Um, so that'd be the basic basic workflow. Um, you can hold the camera above your head. You can put it on a selfie stick or a tripod. You can even you know what? Since we've got video here, <laughs> even. Um, attach it to a helmet, all right? So you can put a Cupix or a 360 camera. You've got many of these lying around, but uh, attach a 360 camera uh, to a helmet, uh, lock it down. Uh, uh, Scott, come take us off the screen share just for a moment so we get the full effect of seeing you. Right now, you're just a thumbnail for us. All right, am I, am I just, too small? Okay. Just pop, pop us out of uh, the, uh, up at the top to stop screen sharing just for a moment. How's that? Uh, I think so, uh, I, uh, but we can't duck down a little bit, duck well, down a little bit. I want to see this, this, the total geeky experience here. I want to really this, get this. This is, as, this is not quite as geeky as it can get. You can get a, a gimbal um, attached to your helmet. I just learned there's probably some other ways you can see. Uh, a gimbal attached to your helmet, attached to your 360 camera. I'm dying. You, you, you must good. send us the links for that or post it in the forum. Uh, in fact, we're, we're recording today's program. We'll, we'll, uh, posted in the We Get Around Network forum. That's wegetaroundnetworkforum.com if you're watching on YouTube. Um, okay, uh, let me take a note. I'll, I'll put that up because I've got it on. Um, yeah. So, 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 Scott, um, do you have yes, more to say about the. So you, put, so you can load this on top of your head and, and you're ready, ready to go. Just walk through the. 
um, walk through the uh, space and then you're you're ready ready to go um so the if you what we found in our research is that shorter females uh seem to pr produce better better tours but i think it's uh the sample size is relatively small if you're a tall person you want to of course uh, uh be concerned about nailing the camera on the door frame but really just like a gentle uh gentle walk um produces pretty pretty consistent tours across the board. If you're just you know moving around like this, then um, you're going to know that. So we're, we're uh, continually optimizing some of the techniques, but um, basically anybody that's using so them. so Scott, while we're here, just take your take take that. Uh, what, what do I want to do? Just lean forward a little bit, and then we want to see your camera. We want to see your camera. Come down, 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 down. Turn a little bit so we can see the side of your camera. Thumbs up. Some th th thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yep. Other thumb, other thumb, big smile. Okay, good. We have our screen grab for our, our, our video. That is so geeky that we just have to have that. I couldn't resist. Oh yeah. That. Sure. Sure. I'll put a note to send you some uh, high res photos of that too. I love that. So do you still have more to say about videogrammetry? Yeah, we most, most definitely do with it. We just uh, kind of went, went a little bit off topic on the types of cameras that uh, could support. So I just wanted to, show that this would be a technique of um, capturing the video data. So on the um, side over here, if we share the screen, we can see what this video data looks like. And it looks like this. This is what the file format looks like. It's nothing big. Um, it, it could be a couple hundred megabytes if you're, um, if you're taking many minutes of, of data. But basically, you just have to hold the camera uh, above your head. Um, in this case, some the uh, person holding the camera, his name's Kimin. He's got it on a selfie stick. Um, but if Kimin uh, had it on his helmet, then um, you wouldn't see the top of his head. You'd see um, just the, the helmet. He's just walking through the space, uh, collecting data. And uh, it, does he have this on video or does he have this take a picture every five seconds? This is the video. So we're going to take the, the data from, uh, from the camera and we're going to upload it to, uh, to Cupix. And then Cupix is going to send us an email. We, we check the email and we have the access to the tour. So this is the upload part. So he's he's actually taking this photo and he's going to upload it to Cupix. And then that tour is going to exist on Cupix. So that's that's the process. Makes and sense. again, we can have this, uh, if we want it public, it can be public. If we want it private, it can be private. If we want iframe to share it, we can share it. Correct. Yeah, same rules apply that we talked about early in the show. Um, yeah, so this is a couple of minutes of uh, video, and you can look at this with other other tools. Like if you wanted to use um, the GoPro viewer, um, for example, then we can see what this looks like in like a GoPro in a 360 uh, viewer format. So uh, the GoPro is pretty well um, known for uh, producing um, some good good video. Um, so for to open this um, same file up. The GoPro viewer, you can see how he's holding the camera. So this is actually a 360 uh, set of uh, data that's being collected through the video. And this is all that's uploaded to Cupix. So you upload this to Cupix, Cupix will um, send you an email when it's done processing. Comes out just like what we were looking at in any other Cupix 3D tour. Yeah, just like any other 3D tour. All right, Scott, now I don't understand why you're absolutely not bouncing off the walls with excitement with what you're showing us here. Because I, I mean, literally, I'm just tingling. The, the, uh, the, the fact that I could shoot a ginormous space, is there any limitation on using Cupix to process uh, 40,000, 100,000 square feet? Uh, we've not tested more than, say, about 60 or 70,000 square feet at a time. Um, so there, there's some practical limits um, that need to be tested and vetted out. But at this point, um, we're, we're really focusing on getting the tools that our customers have been asking for so we can deliver them um, in, a, in a very seamless. Well, I, I, Scott, I don't, I don't want to move on to another topic too soon because really what we are looking at when I see this and go, oh, my gosh, uh, I can now capture a space using video with a, a, a geeky a geeky helmet cam uh, and simply walk the space just like I was walking the tour and for have Cupix to be able to select I, I, whatever you call it, key images, et cetera, in order to construct the tour. This, 
this is this is like so unbelievable and exciting. Um, Some details on the way it works, but the, the core workflow is you, you take the 360 video and then you, you upload it to Cupix and then Cupix will send you an email when it's done with the process. So we're, we're trying to really just streamline streamline the process. But you mentioned some good points about keyframes and and a lot of stuff that we can dive in uh, dive into. But maybe as a reminder for uh, the visitors that have not seen Cupix before, we can go ahead and look at this tour and see what we could do with a video uh, a tour that's produced with video. Yeah, that would that would be great. Um, really, I mean, I this is this uh, what Cupix is showing right now is crazy exciting. Uh, video meets uh, grammetry, video grammetry to create a, a three dimensional model uh, of of a real space it is just blowing me away. Uh, and I, I know that uh, Google has been testing this, so I think this is uh, you know where the world is going. Uh, and the fact that you have it today, February 26, 2018, uh, I presume anyone who's in beta could be testing against this today. Yeah, there's some rules and some practicalities that uh, you'll you'll find some additional description inside of the support site. And uh, when you log into account to the account, you'll be pointed to some support articles. Um, we can go over some of the basic premises as we we look through this uh, we look through this tour. Um, so what we have here is oh yeah, and it's available for anybody today. Correct, Dan. Um, so what we have here is a Cupix uh, tour. It's produced with vi the videogrammetry sample. So Kim in um, who took this shot went ahead and uploaded this to Cupix. Um, so there he is, and there's. There's Kim in, so that's just one of the keyframes that's extracted from uh, from this tour. Is he making a decision about which ones to select, or is Cupix automatically doing that? No, no, the, the process is just a one, two, three. So um, first you upload, and then you get an email uh, back, and then you're ready to go. So it, it literally, what we're seeing in, in terms of those shots, uh, that's to that's totally automated workflow. Yeah, if you were to. Um, walk as uh, with the same gait as Kim in here, um, who's spent some time taking video shots, but really the secret is that keep relatively relatively steady. Um, it's not super sensitive to that, but you get more blur, of course, basic uh, photo photography principles at, at work. And did okay. I did I hear or, you say that you can get a gimbal that would sit between your, your helmet and your camera? Yeah, you know what? Let me let me pause the screen um, before the next topic so I can show you that show you that gimbal. Um, yeah, but you, you can have a gimbal um, a gimbal there. Uh, we've it's actually the Mozo Mozo Guru gimbal. So so we'll uh, we'll take a we'll, we'll take a look at that if that's all right after we finish this topic. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is what what automatically comes out of Cupix. So if we turn off turn up the transparency, you can see that uh, Kim in started right around. Here, I believe, yeah, um, yeah, because that was the um, that's this is the dining area, and he might have walked left, he might have walked right. Um, but what Cupix does is it automatically creates the floor plan view, um, so it creates this nice line. Hey, hey Scott, I, I, I just hate to interrupt you, but I, I'm getting interrupted by comments that are coming from our virtual studio, and I, I thought you'd appreciate hearing them. Uh, sure. okay, Matterport is a goner signing up. I mean, there's they're just send, sending me sending me notes. I can't keep track of the the notes that are coming in. That's how exciting what you're showing. You're like you're used to it because you've been looking at it long enough uh, that you're not bouncing off the wall. But me tingling and people in the virtual studio audience are looking at this and they they are like, oh my gosh, this is Matterport on steroids. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, we'll maybe we can take this and splice it up into parts so that um, somebody that's interested in the videogrammetry can see how it's presented um, uh, in in a concise uh, couple minutes, along with all the excitement that that um, you're sharing here. Okay. Um, any other things to interject, Dan? Uh, I, I I think that's great. And uh, Scott, we'll send you the MP4 file when uh, when, when uh, tomorrow when we're done with the show. And you're you're welcome to cut it up, use it as you want for you know training, blog posts, uh, yeah, uh, newsletters, whatever. I mean, we we are just like super excited, uh, you know, to see what you're showing on this this video um, as it relates to workflow meets super large spaces. Uh, uh, meets 3D tour, uh, meets BIM models. I mean, all this is just like, this is this is like, wow. I mean, the fact that it is exists today, February 26, 2018, uh, is just amazing. 
great. I, I sense your excitement and the extended excitement of the audience that is <laughs> hollering in your ear. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll try and stay on topic and continue here. So this uh, is the um, automatic floor plan, just to refresh the viewers, so the automatic floor plan is created. And what you've got with this floor plan, you got a lot of a lot of stuff here, right? You can imagine taking this into PowerPoint and tracing directly over it, sending it over to, um, there's a lot of members of this forum that um, you know, create sketches, create floor plan drawings, blue sketch, um, Petra, I think was here the other, was here the other day. Um, you can use this as a basis to create a, a sketch template. Um, and you can also take measurements um, directly from this tour. So if you wanted to say measure a distance, um, then you've got measurement capability for, say from floor to ceiling and from um, uh, wall to wall. Um, so just by virtue of walking through a space, you can find out that uh, wall to wall, you're about thir uh, 30 feet in that direction, uh, floor to ceiling, um, you're, you're a meter and a, about two meters up in that direction. These are things that you can scale. So um, there might be some subtle um, details that need to be worked out there, but mm -hmm. basically- And for, gotta, for those that are shooting with the DSLR uh, um, uh, rig, uh, um, how far apart can they be to, to shoot a space? Is it 10 feet? Is it 20 feet? Uh, uh, when does the geometry fall apart because you don't have enough uh, data? Uh, we have recommendations on the support site on that are really the spacing is broken down into three rules, uh, Dan. So one rule is to take photos a step spaced under doorways and hallways to take them two steps spaced and then in rooms take them three steps spaced. And if you're under a large doorway, you can take a bigger step. And if you're in a larger hallway, you can take a bigger step. And if you're in a larger room, you can take a bigger step. But we basically make those suggestions and to have a, a foolproof approach of uh, creating, a, creating a tour. So if you're using a DSLR, um, you can imagine that um, it would be a, a little more painstaking to uh, collect photos. So what we recommend is to use an off-the-shelf camera, uh, like the one I have on top of my helmet, um, or um, yeah, just an off-the-shelf 360 camera, and mix that with DSLR data so you're not um, you know, spending uh, using a lot of pixels underneath the doorway when you could just be uh, taking a shot. Yeah, I, I, I'd hate to be the person who's using, I mean, I used to use a DS, DSLR and uh, fisheye lens and the rotator and the whole thing. And I, I look at something like this and I say, oh my gosh, the, the cameras have gotten to the point where they're so exceptional unless you're doing something so, so uh, w whatever level, uh, I couldn't even imagine using a DSLR when for $3,500 you can get a high-end uh, 360 uh, a camera like Insta 360 Pro. Uh, it, this is just phenomenal. Yeah, the, the DSLR is going to be the the top top uh, method of taking top photos. method. But I, I I just can imagine from a workflow standpoint, if you're trying to uh, knock off uh, sixty thousand square feet, uh, uh, the difference in how you quote the project, being able to to walk the space uh, versus uh, everything that's involved in. Uh, stitching DSLR photography. Um, just, yeah. Yeah. You, sorry, you had me off topic. I was thinking. I was thinking that you were referring back to just general methods of taking photos. So on this topic, on videogrammetry, yeah, uh, off-the-shelf camera is the way to go. GoPro Fusion, um, which we have over there, the E360, um, the Xiaomi, and of course the Ricoh Theta, which we like very much, also are all great cameras for. Uh, collecting space, they have a great dynamic range, and yeah, I, I, and I, I would add for any either you know want to know uh, what the options are for 360 cameras. If you go into the We Get Around Network forum, if you're watching this on YouTube, our YouTube channel, We Get Around Network Forum dot com, and then there's a tab that says cameras. Uh, there's more than 70 options. We're still a little bit behind. There's really about 80 cameras that that, that we've counted, uh, anywhere from $120 to about $100,000. So they're there's a, a wide range just about for any level of job. Um, uh, so, and, and, and if you just want to get started, I mean, literally the, uh, I think the Insta 361 is, is less than $300. It's a, it's a, it's a good start. Rico Theta S a good start. Uh, and then your workflow will just, uh, you know, as you need better imagery, um, just simply buy a more expensive camera. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, wait, cause the cameras are coming out. Like uh, like uh, every couple of months, you're getting a great new camera on the market. Uh, but there's some really, really great options available right now. 
Uh, or any other questions on uh, this videogrammetry uh, process? Okay, yeah, so now instead of taking photos, you just take video, you upload it to Cupix and you get an email when the, when the tour is ready. Yeah, for, for anyone that's watching this, maybe using a, you know, a different 3D tour platform to create uh, three-dimensional models, uh, particularly when you're doing large spaces, um, which Cupix is showing here, us showing us today is magic. I mean, this literally is, um, this is so exciting. It's like, oh my God, you can do this. And uh, I mean, almost almost weekly, someone posts in the We Get Around Network forum to say, hey, I, you know, I got to do a shopping center. I got to do a mall. I got to do, and I'm thinking, oh my God, the Matterport's just not the right solution for this. And now I'm looking at this and I go, oh, you know, this would be so easy to, to walk super large spaces. And I hear you, Scott, there may be some limitations. You haven't had a chance to, you know, bang away at it with some, you know, super large spaces. But even if you told the, you know, a client of a, you know, a mall to say, we may need to deliver it in sections for, you know, different wings or different floors or something. This is crazy. This is, I mean, this is really exciting. And, and, yeah. and in some cases, it would pro probably have been cost prohibitive because of the number of days that it would take to shoot. Uh, now you're making it uh, relatively fast for somebody to just walk normal pace uh, to be able to capture all the video that's necessary to create the three-dimensional model. So anyway, very exciting. Congratulations to the Cubics team for pulling this off. How many square feet we estimate with a videogrammetry solution that we can capture in an hour? Are you, are you curious? It's about a hundred thousand. I'll tell you, it's about a hundred thousand square feet uh, per hour with a videogrammetry uh, solution. So there's there's no real there's no practical limit to the um, size that we can work with, and we've got um, through our past work and you know the different industries that we mentioned at the beginning of the uh, uh, conversation. Can um, I can I walk a hundred thousand square feet in an hour, or I'm I'm at a pretty pretty brisk pace. I don't even know if I could walk yeah, that. Yeah, no, a, gen a gentle pace, a little slower than um, slower than uh, normal. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very easy to do. Mm. So you can get about a million square feet in a, in a day. Of, mm. There's no, there's no practical limit, but uh, we, we haven't, we haven't pushed the tests in those areas, but we, uh, uh, we're, we're excited to do so and then make a really robust uh, solution so that anybody uh, can do what, what we can do. Yeah. So I, I, what I would say to the, to the viewers, if, if you got some really large space and you're curious, you know, go, go do it today. Cubix is still in beta, uh, February 26, 2018. Uh, it's totally free. And I would imagine they would be super excited for somebody to go do a million square feet and see if they run into any problems or issues. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan, for putting that out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I presume that's true. I'm, I'm yeah, my... yeah, we, yeah, we, we would be, we would be, uh, we would like to have that. So if you if you have uh, if you're pushing a hundred thousand square feet, then that is definitely something that you should be able to do. If you get into the uh, millions of square feet, you just talk to us. We'll help, we'll help walk you through the process on how to scale that up. Yeah, I'm ready to go this tomorrow. But I I just imagine the uh, mall security coming to chase after me with my little like, what is that thing that that guy has that he's wearing <laughs> walking walking through the mall? Uh, they're during uh, shopping hours. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, sorry, I'm delirious with excitement looking at this Cupix uh, solution. Great. Okay, so should we go to the next topic? What do you think? Uh, it would be animation programming for guided tour. That's the that's the that's the header. All right. So for animation guided uh, programming for guided tour, again, I'm going to hold the pause screen, um, so you're not going to see the activity while I set up the screen on the left hand um, left side, left hand side here. So and while Scott's setting up, if you're just tuning in, uh, you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. Uh, it's now 5.40 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, February 26, 2018. Uh, we are recording today's program, uh, and uh, we will place it in the We Get Around Network forum under the topic of WGAN-TV uh, uh, Cupix update. So just uh, if you missed any portion you want to see it, we've been recording it for you. Great. Okay. Uh, so can you see my, I want to check and make sure you can see Yes. So what we have here is a, a video just to play it safe a little bit um, showing the camera animation uh, tools instead of Cupix. So we've got all these, let me lay down the, the logic behind here. We've got all these spots. Um, these could be spots taken with, uh, created with videogrammetry. They could be spots uh, collected with um, photos on a tripod. They could be spots uh, collected with a, a camera. 
um, being held above your head. Um, so that is what we have laid down here. This is actually two levels. So we got an eighth floor and then a ninth floor um, here. But in this case, we're just going to show an animation programming between uh, on the on the eighth, eighth floor. Um, so we can add a viewpoint um, to the animation frame. So this is where we would open things up. So it's a little bit hard to see. If you just can maybe describe what you're typing in there so that we know what, what was happening. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. So what we're doing is we're programming different animation frames. So if we wanted to walk uh, towards the window and then take a left or take a right, then we could program each of these frames in and set things like how fast are we going to approach the window? How fast are we going to make a turn? And the way that we define how fast we're going to do things is the duration of the um, of the jump. So and what is the use case for what you're showing now? Oh, there's a variety of use cases. Uh, we'd, we'd leave it up to the realtor, or the architect, or the construction um, construction prof professional to decide, um, you know, what they want to want to do with it. But in a real estate um, situation, you could imagine you, know, you wanted to navigate and show uh, the bathroom and the living room and uh, um, different uh, walkthroughs of the house. Um, so you can easily program a walkthrough um, from a, from a, a real estate listing. So, so, uh, so it's, let me see if I can translate this from Matterport highlights reel where I can set the tour on uh, automatic and it'll go from slide to slide to slide as we're uh, walking the space. So I, if I, if I'm understanding Scott, uh, you can predefine moves to say, okay, you've walked into the front door, you went three feet, you turn left, you're looking at the dining room, you turn right, uh, uh, you're, you're back in the hallway, you're looking at the study, uh, to the right, you're proceeding forward. You're now in the kitchen, uh, you're proceeding past the kitchen. Uh, you're looking to the right. There's a, um, a full living room. So each of those moves can be uh, um, predefined. And then I presume string them all together in order to create a uh, animated walkthrough of the, of the Cupix 3D tour. Yeah, you, you got it. Yeah. So you can see that we're programming the keyframes and then you can show off anything that you want. So if you don't so know just, just for, for, for clarification on this, on this little programming. So mm -hmm. can, do I have the ability to tell the camera which way to look or that's determined by, by setting the imagery to say, okay, I set the image here. Now I'm going to begin and I'm going to say walk uh, walk for three seconds. Yeah, yeah. So, so many questions. I'll show you. I'll, I'll run through the examples so that you can you can see the um, uh, see how it works. Um, is that is that fair? Okay. All right. So yeah, another use case um, in the architect. Since we went through the real estate one in some depth, uh, uh, construction site, you might want to give a tour to some, um, to executives in the room, the owners that want to see what's going on on a construction site. You could walk through the construction site, look at key areas for um, a meeting that you're going to have, a monthly um, sync up meeting with all the stakeholders, and just uh, walk through all the spots. Um, you can also share that tour uh, outward so that when somebody plays that tour, they can um, see those spots and see those sites and if they want to pause they can pause and if they want to resume uh, they can resume resume that tour uh, that way um, so we're going to go to this videogrammetry sample um, which is the same uh, whoops the camera animation sample um, which is right here and then in the publisher tab this is where we would set up an animation for publishing um, we're going to be able to program the animation uh, keys. Um, so right on, over here under camera animation, um, we've got a frame, a couple of frames that have already been pro programmed. This was the first frame, and the first frame has got a three second duration. And what I like to do is have it ease out. Um, so it jumps quickly and then it ease and it slows down as it arrives. And um, if we play that um, frame, you can see it jumps quickly and it slows down. Um, as, as it arrives at the, at the location. And then you can uh, program each, each of these frames. So if we wanted to add a new one, um, let's say that, for example, jumped um, to this, uh, this spot from where it was previously, then I just press the add button. Um, I add an animation, we'll call this the last frame of the animation. Um, just for good measure, we can have that a really slow duration, maybe a five second duration, and we'll have it ease in and ease out. So if we were uh, setting that and playing the tour, we'd expect that when that last animation showed up, we'd have a five second, uh, yeah, a really nice five second um, duration, and then 
and you're done with the animation. So I didn't we, understand how you turned. Oh, you turn by um, turning the view. So uh, the, the, the first frame, you were walking towards the, uh, the sunset. On the second frame, you turned the camera, <coughs> excuse me, you turned the camera to face inside. You know what? Let me let me do that for you really deliberately here. With um, we'll just walk down down this stretch, and we'll make a we'll make a right turn right here, and we'll walk down the other way. How about that? Okay, so let's let's program that. We're gonna walk down this way. Um, I'm gonna ease uh, ease out. Okay, I'll go over here, and then we'll ease out again. Let's jump a few steps. So we'll jump all the way over there, and then we'll ease out again. Um, since we jumped a little bit further, let's make that a two second duration. And now this is the turn. All right, so I'm going to turn this way. I'm going to turn all the way up there. Mm. I'm going to look around. Uh, yeah, turn right there. And then I'm going to add that as a as a next location, next keyframe. All right, so I'm going to ease in and ease out. And what we find is that when you have these rotations, it's it's uh, intuitive to have those work a little bit slower. So the linear motions, you can have those. Um, more frequent, but the uh, turns you want to slow down. Uh, to, when but, you started moving the camera up to the ceiling and then back down, was that part of what will be programmed? No, it's, it sure wasn't. Just the final location is final fine. location. Okay, so I'm, I'm look. I, I start here and I'm looking there, and I'm going to go a duration of three, presumably three seconds. Yeah. yeah, about three seconds, right? All right. So we just did what? Whoops, um, we just did. What we were describing, I, I deleted those last two. Let's just fix that. All right, so two seconds, and we'll do one more step. So one second, and then just one more. I, I just can imagine that the the next um, you know job description or help wanted of the future is going to be three D tour animator. Walker, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think like this is like a whole, whole. All right. So yeah, whole, you just set it, and then you can sit back and see. Uh, watch, watch the tour. So we've got it uh, started, and we're walking down this hallway. Remember? Mm -hmm. We're going to take our right. There's the right hand turn. We're going to pause for. And you, it, and you did that slowly, and you programmed the pause. Program the pause, and then you walk forward. Uh, walk forward twice. Yep. And then if we wanted to jump to another floor or another part of the the tour uh, we could do that easily and we would just set the appropriate transitions if you're jumping from the inside of a real residence to the outside you might want to have a longer ease ease in ease out period um just to uh, have a, have whatever style you choose for your animation okay so once that's set um the next thing that you want to do is publish that and share it um so if this is a tour that's already been published and we can set a couple of options like um whether the tour will automatically load or not, and whether the camera animation will automatically load. In this case, mm. both of them are, uh, the camera camera animation is automatically loading. So if I hit the preview button, um, we can see what the impact this has, and it just takes a second to load. Um, we've got a cover screen that's been programmed there. Um, now it says presented by Cupix, just for clarification, that could be presented by We Get Around or presented by XYZ Company. Yeah, since this is a Cupix um, owned Present. tour, we have presented by Cupix. Yeah. But all the all the this is totally uh, white labeled to uh, those that want to be able to customize with their company name or their client's company name and you logo. Could, you could change the you could remove the presented by Cupix or you could put your own logo up there on the. And top. there's one powered by Cupix. Does that remain in? Uh, that's going to stay there for for the time being. Okay. Okay. Right, Might so be an opportunity, just saying. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So let's continue on this one. Um, explore it in 3D. We can hit the play button. And um, then as we had mentioned, the animation gets uh, loaded. And then you can run the animation immediately from the Keypix player. Make sense? Uh, yes. Uh, in addition, can we export this as an MP4 that we could put on YouTube or Vimeo or other uh, video hosted hosting platform? Uh, you would be able to easily screen record using uh, software like Screencastify, which is a Chrome plugin, or free recording tools like Free TV DVD. We can show okay. you how to do that. All right. Note to Simon. 
export to MP4 file. Mm -hmm. Note note to Simon, export to YouTube, export to Vimeo. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Dan. Um, all right, so any other questions on this topic? That's amazing. I love it. Okay, let's continue on to the uh, in-browser blur tool. And for this sample, I'm going to, again, pause the screen and then jump to... Um, if you're just tuning in, you're, uh, we're visiting with the Cubix Director of Sales, Scott Anderson, He's taking us through uh, an update of Cubix since we last visited on WGAN TV Live at 5 in late November 2017. We did a two hour show. If you're looking for uh, really a deep dive into Cubix, we've done that. Uh, uh, look, look for that in the We Get Around Network forum. We'll look for it in the uh, WGAN Training Academy Library. Uh, today is really about an update of what's changed since uh, late November 2017. Scott, you ready to share screen there? Yeah, I am. Okay. So what we got here is a, uh, a new feature called the in-browser blur tool. And why this is helpful is that um, if you've got uh, photos that need to be blurred, then the workflow means you got to take them into uh, Photoshop or a uh, Blurring software where you can blur individual photos, um, export them back out. If you happen to miss an area, then you've got to repeat that process, and it can be very cumbersome involving cloud software um, to PC, PC or Mac software and going back and forth many times. So the in-browser blur tool is something that we've introduced that allows you to blur images um, uh, directly inside of the browser. When those um, uh, show up in the preview, um, or excuse me, in the player, the, that um, blur is baked into the image. And if you're doing exports, that's also baked into the image. So you've got um, a, lot of, a lot of privacy by virtue of uh, this, this feature. So in the, the case that I have is a, 15, a set of 15 photos that were uploaded uh, to Cupix. Uh, these were taken by- And again, just for clarification, when you talk about photos, they're actually 360 photo spheres, equi-rectangular JPEGs, equi-rec. Uh, photo in our world is actually a 360 photo or 360 photosphere. And that's what, when you, when you say photo in shorthand, you're really meaning a 360 photo sphere or equi-rectangular JPEG. Yeah, every, every time I said photo, I've, I've, um, that's, that's been the intention. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to clarify, okay. uh, be more precise with that, that naming. So when you upload a, uh, 15 360 photos uh, to this tour, um, we've constructed this tour and we've got the floor plan, which um, uh, looks great, but there's a lot of faces here. And if we're just trying to um, produce a, this is a champagne event. Um, so not everybody was sitting here drinking champagne at that time, but uh, these photos weren't taken all all in sequence so when it got time for the champagne everybody gathered around the middle and they moved the tables around and we have a bunch of um, uh, faces here that we might not want to include inside of the um, the published uh, published tour um, so we have inside of the publisher some automation uh, tools we, we like to call it ai so some um, intelligent software to figure out uh, faces um, but we might have overwhelmed the software in this case, so there's just a lot of glasses and a lot of half, half faces that are being um, shown there. So we have this tool to um, now do the interactive blurring. Um, so now with the interactive blurring, all you have to do is hit the shift key and then you can be, begin to blur, uh, blur faces out. Um, or if there's any confidential information, you can um, blur that confidential information out um, and just remove all of that from, um, uh, from view. So directly inside of the um, browser, you can go and um, change the radius if you need to um, for bigger bigger blurs for you guys that are closer that's i'm pretty sure that's me um, and just uh, wipe everybody out that you don't want to include in the uh in the tour um so awesome that would be, that would be the process uh, to get that done and um, uh, you, you were doing a, a right click and a mouse and you would set your radius yeah, there's all sorts of intuitive so intuitive pop-ups like this one to shift shift click to blur the areas of the image. And if I didn't want to shift click, I, there is a menu that I could look at that menu and say select that particular blur tool or tour. Or do I still need to do the shift click? It's it's really easy to use. You you have to follow the uh, the, the guidelines that we have set up. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's that should be pretty straightforward. And then when you um, say we're to publish this to um, uh, a player, or w when we talked last time, if any of the visitors wanted to go back and visit the last uh, 
video, we covered publishing to Street View. So things like that would also um, be covered here. I'm sorry, um, publishing to? If you're publishing uh, this tour, say, to Google Street View, then the blurring that you've applied here would be... Um, um, so uh, this is actually great. I'm not sure that we said during our first program that uh, Cupix is is moving in the direction of enabling publishing to Google Street View. Is that mean commercially today uh, we start using Cupix that we can publish to Google Street View? Oh, my my mistake. I thought we had uh, discussed that even even if ever so briefly in the last. Uh... We, we may have, uh, um, but I'm not sure that we did. So I, 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 it, it's actually so important, if you don't mind, maybe just spend, even if we did cover it, let's just recover it. Uh, talk to me about Google Street View meets Cupix. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So the premise is relatively simple. Um, we have a constellation. We've got a tour. Uh, the analogies are pretty obvious. I think any, anybody can see those analogies. So if I'm taking the, these uh, photos and putting them into Google Street View would be the scope. So as simple as that. Commercially available today? No, it's not commercially available. It's um, when we had last had the conversation, which I think was back in November on Thanksgiving time, it was still something that we're working on. So it's in the same, um, same uh, state right now. But yeah, hopefully it's hopefully that'll come out come out soon. But I can't really share any any deal, details about that right now. It's more in the developers' hands. Okay, so uh, super exciting. I think we've actually heard an announcement today uh, that uh, that Cupix is working on uh, deep integration, uh, making it easy, fast, and simple to publish to Google Street View. The Blur in tour 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 tool uh, is included. Uh, and now that we've also seen the uh, video grammetry, the, uh, uh, in addition to the photogrammetry to create the three-dimensional tour, then um, I, I would imagine that we would now be able to publish, um, uh, if we could cover 100,000 square feet in an hour with a, a 360 video camera attached to a helmet, helmet cam like Scott's uh, modeling for us today, then... Um, uh, we now have a workflow uh, that's just amazing to, to be able to uh, uh, capture, blur, publish to Google Street View in some amazing large su super size, uh, a normal size, but e even the ability to cover a, 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 a ginormous space. Sounds good? Sounds good. Sounds good. Hey, uh, and, I'm, I, and, I, and I'm going to go out on a kind of just a, on a limb here is just to say, gee, I believe the Google, the 2018 Google Street View Summit is Wednesday, June. So that was May, wasn't it? May, uh, May so uh, Wednesday, May 30th, Thursday, May 31st. Uh, in San Francisco, we did a whole uh, show on uh, uh, premiering the first time that Google said publicly we're uh, on television where the Google Street View Summit would be. So I would imagine if I'm just kind of taking a guess that, that the timing is sometime between today, February 26, 2018, and the, the, uh, the, the, the 2018 Google Street View Summit uh, opening day of Wednesday, May 30th, 2018. Scott, you, you could just blink your eye a little bit as like, like maybe that would be good timing that, uh, to, to be uh, ready to go. Maybe sooner, but uh, I, I, yeah, could be, could be. We got a lot on our plates from a lot of pools from different directions. So, okay, like just, on the construction construction side, there's not as much interest on the Google Street View. And then, if you had, you know, if we're focusing more on, um, you know, a particular industry, then they pull us in that. Yeah. Direction. Okay. Well, well just I, I just imagine that uh, that that our community, who's super excited about publishing to Google Street View, um, that this is, uh, uh, this is this is huge. Um, okay. Uh, well, we'd love to. We'd love to hear it if, if that's okay. the voice of the, the community. That um, we, we'd love to love to know that that's okay. important. You know, I know that we covered um, a, a Nader patch, the tripod patch for uh, for 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 the still pictures. I'm just presuming when we do the video that we can also do that uh, that patch uh, for video, since essentially you're pulling out a key frame or key 360. And now it's just treated like any other 360. To, to uh, yeah, yeah, sure. We covered that in the last. Uh, 
last area. Yeah, I'll just show that real quick. Yeah, so you can customize the player, <coughs> customize the player with a, nat a natter patch, um, and they're interchangeable. Whether you're taking data with a photo or video, it's interchangeable. Yeah, very exciting, super exciting. I know that question is coming from our virtual studio audience. Just wanted to interject that there. Yeah, and then okay. that would also be baked into the image as you'd expect if you're doing any type of publishing okay. of that matter. And, and for, for those that are watching WGAN TV live at five here today, um, you know, if, if Google Street View is important to you, you know, s send a note to Cupix because they're highly responsive. They really want to get input from, uh, you know, people that are banging away at the platform. So really the first thing, set up a, an account. It's, it's totally free until they come out of beta. Uh, and then just l let them know what features you feel are missing. And if, if Google Street View, you know it's coming, we've heard that here today, then I think um, just let them know, you know how important that is to you, uh, maybe why, what the use case is. Because um, I uh, personally, Scott, when I, when I look at what you're talking about and saying Google Street View, and I say, okay, you know, Matterport's got, you know, Google Street View, it's now in public beta, um, but I, you know, if if you wanted to shoot anything over ten thousand square feet, um, you know, I'd be a little bit reluctant. You know, I I know Matterport would say you could shoot, you know, forty thousand square feet or something, but um, you're you're talking about a, a, a workflow uh, that on a construction site would 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 let you sh shoot uh, the entire hundred thousand square feet, the entire million square feet in theory, every day. If 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 that progress reporting was important to the client, so you, you really have enabled uh, Cupix has enabled a, a a workflow that's crazy. I mean, it's just crazy exciting, and um, you know. So uh, ho hopefully the the Google Street View piece comes sooner than later. But I understand that uh, that that the, you're, uh, you may be more focused at the moment on the AEC space, architects, engineers, and construction. Uh, street view is not necessarily a priority there. Um, so they're, so that's interesting. So, um, it's coming. Yeah. yeah we, we're, we're making a platform for all, um, a virtual tours for, for everybody. So, um, it, we've got one, we've got real estate in mind. We've got rentals in mind. We've got, um, public spaces, construction spaces in mind. Um, each, each of these, uh, sub markets have, have different important needs and um, we've got a very talented pool of developers that are um, really knocking out incredible updates on a, on a monthly basis as um, we've been trying to share on the we get around network um, so we, I mean it's on it's on the it's on the docket of things to um, release and we're excited about uh, this from all the sub industries and and um, we're really trying to have a really real quality product that uh, can be used by all these different industries so um, very exciting. Thank you. Very, very exciting. Okay. Uh, shall we go to the next uh, topic, Dan? So which sounds great. YouTube videos in a Cupix tour. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to hit the share button uh, here. Can you let me know if you can see this? Yes. Uh, tour. Okay. So what we have here is um, actually an interesting test uh, test case. And if you, if you ask me to stick around a little bit longer, um, maybe I can show the differences between a couple of different cameras here um, as a, as a follow-up topic. But uh, in this case, I want to show um, with a, a mirrorless camera um, how we can publish uh, YouTube links um, directly into a tour. So um, this is a bracketed uh, camera. Um, this is just taking at the at the mall on a quiet morning, and um, we have uh, a tour uh, a tour that's been generated here. And what I want to do um, uh, to to show here is I want to show how you can add uh, push pins um, to say properties. Um, this could be um, it doesn't have to be a, a mall. It could be the inside of a mall um, rather than the outside of the mall. Mm -hmm. um, and you could be tagging individual items if you wanted. Um, in this case, we're going to be inserting an iframe, and the iframe is a YouTube link. Um, so we're supporting all iframes, um, but right now we're whitelisting only YouTube, so you can only bring in YouTube links. So if you have a Shopify link that you want to bring in or a Shopify iframe, let us know. Let us know why that's important. If you want to use Vimeo instead, let us know why that's important. Um, but right now we're, we're supporting uh, YouTube. Um, and while you're doing that, Scott, I just wanted to mention to our, our virtual studio audience that uh, if, if you all could stick around towards the, the end, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to bring you on camera uh, just so that you can give um, 
uh, Scott, your feedback of what you saw as well as ask some questions. But I, I think it'd be really good. I mean, I, I've been super excited watching what Scott's showing. I, I just love to have have him be able to hear what some other members of the We Get Around Network Forum community have to say about what they're seeing today, just so you can hear from some other people. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, so here's a YouTube uh, video. Um, this is just Anthropology, uh, which is a brand. I've, I've been inside there. I think my wife likes it. Um, a lot not really all well, well, wives like it remember what they sell there <laughs> but you can put this in and you can make it a 500 pixel um spread and that's 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 what this does so you can um, hover over this link uh let's see can, can you make it harder <laughs> yeah yeah, that's that's the way it works so that was super easy love it that's that's that is just awesome that is great all right, so you can show and hide those objects, and when you publish to a tour, and the, those videos show up inside of, of the uh, tour. Yeah, that that's awesome. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. Um, any questions on how that how that works? It, uh, very straightforward. Very exciting. Super exciting. Okay, great. Um, the next topic I would like to. Um, go over is just the workspace collaboration feature. And what we're actually seeing here is um, an example. I, I just wanted to make you know one note is that um, uh, I, I personally would love to know if you have plans to work with Embedly, E-M-B-E-D dot L-Y, which enables embedding of about a thousand different uh, <laughs> solutions. Uh, and uh, hopefully that you all are planning to build out uh, to the Embedly platform that would enable you to overnight have um, many integrations rather than building out one at a time. Oh yeah, the, the, we really just have a whitelist of uh, allowable embeds. Um, so you just drop embed code into the, um, into the tour. So we don't want to include, um, you, we don't want to just have a general whitelist because we want to keep this uh, kind of practical and lim limited to okay. um, places that are useful. But yeah, that's, if there's a good reason why we should do that, I'd love, we'd love to uh, hear about that, but I'll take a note on that. Um, I'll take a note on embed, embed right now. E M B D let's see. E M E M B E D dot L Y embedly. That's exactly what I write down. Okay, yep. great. Okay. All right. Uh, so the workspace collaboration feature is what I'd like to talk about next. And what we're looking at is actually a, a test um, test workspace. Um, so we can work with multiple workspaces uh, inside of uh, Cupix, but this is a uh, workspace that we can now um, share with uh, other people. So if I wanted to share this with uh, you, Dan, I could type in your email, dan at uh, wegetaroundnetwork.com, and then I could share this, um, just use a fake email here. Dan at gmail.com, which I'm sure is probably not, your email. Not, not my email. I was I was not among the first in order to get my first name with uh, gmail.com. Right. So that, who, who, to whoever Dan that is, you can make <laughs> read, right? You, read. you could put in my email. It's fine. Dan Smigbrod, uh, Dan, S, uh, all one word, Dan Smigbrod, one word. I'm giving you the longer version. At we get no hyphens. I'm giving you a longer version, Scott. We get around network.com. All right. So I've just given you read only access and I'm going to revoke this after the, after the show. Oh. Um, so um, the email is not registered with Cupix. So you'd have to. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Got it. I need an account. Needed to you set up to an account. With an account. Um, so I don't have to rewrite it. So you, you saved me a step. But uh, okay. you get read-only access. Um, but I, I'd be happy to share another another space with you that wasn't um, you know wasn't private like this. Um, but I can give you read access, read-only access, or read-write access. So what this enables um, me to do potentially is maybe share this tour with you, um, so that share the set of tours with you, so that you can interact, so that you can uh, uh, add comments, so that you can update some of the assets, whether they're BIM assets or drawing assets or maybe images and imagery that you want to put into the tour. Uh, and so for, 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 for clarification here, Scott, um, if you want to share it with me, I need to have a Cupix account. Um, but if I'm just doing read only, I know we haven't gotten to pricing. We haven't gotten to when you're going to release it, but somehow, some way, I just could imagine that there's some 
mechanism for, for sharing that doesn't necessarily cost money if I want to invite people just to look at it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check on on, okay. on that. I'm not really sure what. I know we're a little bit ahead of that, but the the, the point is uh, to share. You need to have a Cupix. The person you're sharing with needs to be registered with Cupix. Yeah, for this type of collaboration, yeah. for security purposes, you need to have a password in order to access it and okay. validate your password. By Which is great because you're you're showing you're showing that you can share privately without having to make it public to share it with someone. So you're 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 working on a nuclear plant. You don't necessarily want to have. Uh, what you have uh, be public, you're sharing it in a private way. Curry, right. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so that's the workspace collaboration uh, feature. And yeah, we can share. Um, you can have different owners, you can have uh, different uh, levels of per permission. And then all of those uh, users are able to collaborate inside of the um, shared workspace. So. Um, if you are a member, you can create new workspaces. You can, um, there's all sorts of, of nifty things you can do here yeah. uh, for collaboration and really controlled sharing. All right, a little uh, more. Uh, Scott, I, w I wasn't giving you feedback because I was just uh, you know, reading a comment here, but uh, one of our uh, folks in the virtual studio audience, so I'm totally blown away and already signing up and starting testing. This is game changing. Uh, what's the catch? Uh, any idea of pricing? Uh, expecting? Uh, we'll 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 get to pricing at, at, at the end. Yeah. I don't even think you know pricing, but um, timing and pricing. Uh, but uh, um, let I'll tell you what. We'll hold the questions at this point. We'll wait till we get to the end of the program. Uh, we will bring into the virtual studio audience all of those in our virtual studio audience so that they can give you the re reactions directly, uh, as well as see if they have some questions. And that way, we'll, we'll keep you moving. Okay, that sounds uh, sounds good. Well, there's one one last topic. It's uh, the obfuscate uh, feature. I'm pretty sure I said that correctly. Um, so I'm going to pause this. Obfuscate. Obfuscate. Uh, is this ob a different? Obfuscate. Obfuscate. Thank you. I did not say that correctly. The okay, we we may need a different word for this, but we'll, let's see what the application does. We'll 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 give you a word on the fly. Okay, I'm going to share the screen uh, now. Okay. You can see the updated screen. Okay, so this is a, a Qpix um, obfuscate um, or occlusion uh, box. And so when we're talking about pins, we're actually talking about 360 photospheres. Uh, yeah, let me, let me uh, explain this. I think the visuals will do a good, uh, good explanation of this. So what we see here is we've got a pin way over there on the other side of the park. Um, that's pointed at half pipe. Um, but from this pers particular perspective that we have, we've got a pole in front of the view. So that pin shouldn't be seen there. It should be, um, it should not be able to be uh, visualized from that view. So uh, we want to hide that. And with this new feature, uh, there it is, it's on the other side of the park, um, but uh, it's showing up directly in front of that object. And the reason why we have uh, these kind of situations is that, um, unless you unless you're collecting really dense data, a lot basically a lot of photos around this object, then um, does a mesh construct around that um, around that beam. Um, since we're just taking sparse data, um, that uh, beam isn't really constructed as a, a 3D mesh. So say you're in a in a house or in, in a building, the walls would definitely be constructed. But in this case, we don't have enough photos around the beam to have that be a 3D mesh. Um, so as we um, use the tools inside of Cupix, we can place a beam, um, we call it a box, um, directly in where that beam should be. And we can place that uh, anywhere we want inside of the uh, tour. And this could be used for uh, um, occlusion uh, case. It could also be used to hide an object. Maybe you've got a proprietary statue or a sculpture that you want to hide. Um, uh, or maybe there's some equipment that you don't want anybody to see. You could use this box um, as a 
has a has a box that hit an object. Um, ah, this okay, so uh, so I, uh, for, forgive me for adding my two cents here, Scott. But um, occlusion is something I, I get when I go to the dentist, and obfuscation is something that I do when I play Scrabble. Um, so your your new term is hide. Uh, when you want to hide a scan or when you want to hide a space, you hide. H i d e. <laughs> Done. Sure, that could be. That might be the short short term name, but the actual name is occlusion box. I, I I know you're going to come up with a new name for it because it just sends me towards the dentist or something. That okay. oh, it doesn't sound good. So yeah, well, uh, we don't want, we don't want people to think about the dentist. Uh, we're we're, yeah, we're uh, in in our community. We're going to call it the 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 hide scan or hide space, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Is occlusion. Uh, so you can uh, see exactly what that does um, by turning the occlusion box, as it's named right now, um, on. Then you can't see that pin. So as you, uh, so it's like a, like how it's supposed to be. So occasionally you get these uh, instances where you, know, you don't you don't have a dense mesh and you want to hide something on the other side. This is really the foolproof way um, to have virtual objects in in the space um, that are are hidden from view um, when you're on the other side of the wall or hidden from view. Um, when you're on the other side of, of a pole, even if that pole wasn't collected or that wall wasn't collected uh, perfectly, you can still hide anything that you want. I'm sorry, well, if, if, if we wanted to hide that pole, that column, uh, and we put the hide um, uh, space, then I'd actually see that green thing in the 3D tour. No, sorry. I meant uh, if you want to, yeah, I, I, can, I can use the terms a little bit. So if you wanted to, have, if, I'm going to say there's two terms because I, I got to make it so I understand it. I can either hide 3D, hide scan, that's one of those dots on your map, or hide space, some space within the tour that I want to hide. So if I want to hide, hide a space, which is that column, uh, what I will see when, when you hide that column is some type of green structure um, that I can't permeate. I can't, I can't walk through it. Yeah, the occlusion box is like setting up, putting up a wall that isn't that isn't there, or a pole that isn't there. So okay. if there's a pole that pole that isn't, uh, if there's a mesh where that pole is, then you wouldn't be able to see what's behind that. All right. So on the occlusion, I I can make it a polygon. I can make whatever shape. I can make it as tall as I want, as short as I want. I can go from floor to ceiling. I can make it as wide as I want. And if, and if it needs to be an odd shape, I can draw an odd shape around the space to um, uh, to hide it from from view. Yeah, we, we're supporting uh, boxes at this point, so you can boxes. construct okay. multiple boxes if you needed to. Okay. But, uh, down the road, you might, okay. might be looking at other areas. This seems to do the trick in most of the cases, especially in, in buildings with have rect rectangle size um, shaped walls, and then even for columns like um, what we're seeing here. Uh, so this is what uh, you can use to perfect the tour and um, becomes more appropriate, especially if you're using embed links like, um, excuse me, uh, pins that embed to YouTube videos like we showed earlier. Okay. Um, okay, and that kind of kind of does it. Um, All right, for... I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring our, 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 our viewers in. So if, literally, if you don't want to be on camera, please, uh, you know, hang up on us. But otherwise, uh, Leon, here you come. Uh, Mark, I'm going to bring you into the into the studio here. And uh, uh, I, I got a button that's hiding. Uh, let's see, Carl bringing you into the studio here. So, um, uh, Leon, why don't we start with you? Is uh, you know, Why don't you just give Scott reaction to what you're seeing today? Okay, let me just ask my wife to turn the kettle off. Just, uh, oh, his, his wife has turned the kettle off, okay. <laughs> no, it's just making uh, a, a, a lot of uh, background noise here. Uh, Scott, I'm... Uh, particularly blown away by the videogrammetry. I, uh, I was trying to figure out how the hell do you do that, but uh, I suppose it is, I, I'll leave it to the younger, more intelligent types to figure out how but, to do let, that. Let's just call that magic, Leon. We won't ask for it for the <laughs> no, recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken here today. Uh, but what, what do you think in terms of the end use case of what you're seeing today? I'm, uh, but, but what I see is time. We save time, and uh, there is different uh, uh, applications. So, 
I think uh, for the, the video grammatry, especially for large spaces and, and spaces where you excuse, don't- I, I'm sorry, excuse me, just one moment. Scott, could you take us off the screen share? Then we'll be able to see everybody. Yes, I can do that. Okay, top button, great, thank you. Sorry, Leon. I think the, the, the video grammatry is particularly interesting uh, uh, for large spaces uh, because it's really a pain in the butt, but I've, I've been trying to figure out uh, better ways like with the uh, gimbal and I've actually uh, uh, started thinking here, Scott, in terms of the camera height, uh, when you mount it on your helmet and you put a gimbal, does that affect, is there some sort of a ratio where the, where, where the camera should be in terms of uh, floor to ceiling height that you should not exceed? Uh, no, there's no real uh, limitations. It doesn't matter all that much. It's really just the perspective um, of where the video or the photos are taken. Now, really now, and, and now when, you, when you view the uh, space uh, after you've uh, taken the, uh, it with a video, obviously, your, your, your point of perspective uh, is going to be actually from the top of your head. Am I correct in assuming that? Yeah, yeah. So well, one thing that we like to do for larger spaces is hold the uh, camera up uh, on a handheld aerial. So it's really just a long pole, another way to substitute for a drone um, and just walk the space with uh, the camera up 20 or 30 feet. Um, so you can do that, and then the perspective would be almost as if you were um, using using Qpix with a drone. So wherever the camera is uh, collecting data, whether it's uh, from a shorter uh, person or a taller person or on a tall pole, that's going to be the perspective of the tour. And 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 when you uh, when you actually do the uh, uh, viewing the uh, the space. Uh, you can actually set the angle of the camera looking down so that it can exclude the person taking the video. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. The uh, person is going to be well. He's going to be he or she's going to be part of the video. Um, but if uh, you've got a nadir patch, then I mean it occupies a very small amount of the um, of the view. Uh, so it's not it's not really much of a factor. Okay, but are you able to set the angle of the view of the camera? Uh, instead of uh, pointing down 90 degrees, can you set it, say, pointing down only 75 degrees? Uh, that's a good question. Let me, I, I believe you can. I think you can set an initial, initial, I'd, I'd have to look into that. I think the initial. No, 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 I'll, I'll reason, just but. think it might be an interesting solution in the removing the actual person walking in the idea uh, space uh, uh, to exclude them from the tour. Uh, uh, normally, the eye doesn't really look 90 degrees down. OK, that's your question. Yeah, the answer is yeah. If you wanted, if you knew that the helmet, for example, didn't span any further than, uh, say, 16 degrees in any direction, mm -hmm. uh, then you could set the value to be no greater than a 16 degree uh, decline. So you would, you would remove that person from ever being seen in the tour. So I, I think I think that's your question is to have a yes. have a bracket or a limit on how far you can go down. In the answer that's my question. question. Okay. Yes. yes. Thanks, Leon. Um, hey, Mark, um, uh, good to see you. Uh, before you ask any question, just please give Scott your initial reaction for what you've seen today. Can't hear you. <laughs> I got your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I let me unmute you. Hang on a second. So uh, sorry. Okay. okay. Now I got you, Scott. Now you uh, excuse got me, me. Uh, Mark. We got you. What What is your initial reaction uh, from what you've seen Scott present today? Beautifully blown away. Actually, I, this is. Um, I think this could be a real game changer. Um, I think I, you've probably seen me comment in the past that I have been sitting on the sidelines with regards to the whole Matterport space because I've been a Google Street View virtual tour photographer. That's primarily my client base and also doing more high-end photography. Um, so that really, the, the concept of being able to have a publishing platform that looks far easier to use than Panatu VR or Panatu Pro or any of these other formats. This is really what I find particularly interesting and adding the grammatry into that, um, which is sort of that missing nugget 
uh, has been really um, what I find fascinating. I can see myself um, offering my services to a, 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 you know, a, a lot more of the architectural industry, um, you know, aged care facility development. There's a whole heap of, of industries that this could really um, be, be applied to. So yeah, good on you. Really well done. I, this is a, this is a pretty cool tool. So I'm, I'm quite excited at actually having to go and, and seeing if I can actually convert a tour that I've just shot for a literally a mall. Uh, it's a 130 store mall I've just shot recently. Uh, <laughs> so I've actually got to go back and actually start doing the actual stores next. That's the next job. So I've done all the internals of the actual mall hallways and all that. So this is a perfect opportunity for malls that are looking at doing redesign, redevelopment, uh, new leased spaces, those kinds of things. So that's so, so good on you for doing that. That's great. Uh, my question for you with regards to this is in terms of what are the maximum limitations in terms of image quality, resolution, uh, dynamic range? Are there any limitations in terms of what the platform will, will support or host? Uh, yeah, at this point, we are, uh, there's no file size limitation um, at, at the moment. So you can upload a, a 100 megapixel uh, photo. Um, what we're doing is we're providing a low resolution sample inside of the editor so you can work nimbly and work quickly to yep. construct the tours. On the player, um, we're streaming uh, increasing resolution photos as the bandwidth allows it. So if somebody's got a really fast connection, they'll see the highest re resolution photo immediately. So you've got um, a great performance for uh, optimal performance regardless of the uh, type of user. One of the challenges that we run into is um, that we're not hosting just a single photo. We're hosting dozens or hundreds or, or thousands th thousands of photos so for um, each of those tours there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, data storage a lot of computation that takes place in order to uh, stream all those in depending on where you're uh, where you're at so um, right now I, I think I do believe there's a limit um, on, uh, it's just a um, arbitrary number it might be 50 megapixels or so um, where we just uh, 50. Do you downscale? Are you actually just downscaling the image? Yeah, we're, just, we're, down, we're, just down, we're doing some kind of compression on, on the image. So okay. anytime you're below that amount, uh, there's no issue. But if you get to a certain uh, certain level, then that, that okay. arbitrary limit sets in. So as we um, walk out of beta, um, you know, if that becomes something that's r relevant, we'll just change that ar arbitrary number uh, mm -hmm. to something that um, that match, matches what the customers need. Yeah, Mark, that, given that you're, oh, excuse me, go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, given that you're a Google Street View trusted photographer um, and, and knowing that Cupix is heading in the direction to, to make it easy, fast and seamless to publish to, to Google Street View, uh, is this complement your workflow? Does this replace your workflow? What does this enable you to do that you couldn't do that you can't do today? It doesn't stop me from doing anything that I can do today, but it probably will enhance the um, it'll actually from what I'm you know initial view, because, of course, I'm still absorbing all this. Um, is it may actually speed up workflow. Uh, it'll definitely from, you know, the, by the way, the blur thing, you wouldn't have any, yeah, I sit in Photoshop and manually blur people's faces and license plates, I, you know, and it takes a lot of time and I like to do it nicely. So if the tool does a reasonably good job of that, yeah, that, that in and of itself will actually be a time saver. Um, so, so those are the kinds of things where, will it actually help? Probably there, yes. If anything else, otherwise, is it possibly opens new markets in terms of um, as opposed to like right now, I've, I've done about three or four different shoots for uh, home builders who are building designer homes. And, you know, there's sort of it's that architectural quality, you know, on the million dollar homes overlooking the ocean kind of thing for those kinds of, of, of buildings. If they do actually want to add on uh, the, uh, the photogrammetry as part of telling their story, that becomes a very, very powerful additional tool that I'll be able to offer. Um, you know, so, so I can see those as being, you know, what are the benefits? It's going beyond the scope of what I've already done before. Um, will I, you know, I'm likely to be one of those guys who's going to, I'll be a diehard uh, DSLR shooter for a long time because I'm, I, <laughs> I like the quality. I, I, anything less than 50 megapixels to me is just kind of like, ah, whatever. Uh, so I, I would, I would, I'll probably go down that path and wait to see what new 360 cams are going to be able to provide that are actually going to be in excess of that. So, well, you know, the next camera body I'm likely to get is probably going to be an A7R3. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I want to up the, the ante, not go down to me. It's all about, you know, and, and that's one of the major questions I think that's actually happening within our space as an industry 
is a lot of people are trying to dumb it down to make it more accessible. Or as I'm saying, hang on a second here, if, if, if we keep doing that, uh, what are we really offering? Any, 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 what we call the, you know, I'm sure you probably use the term the panel monkey approach where you can just send somebody out to just take a bunch of photos for you. Well, that's fine, but that doesn't differentiate quality and in, in, um, as a, as a, as a platform. So I'm more interested about where are you going in terms of higher resolution, uh, higher capabilities. Um, in fact, actually the other one I would have as a question is what about 3d? How far are you from being able to implement 3D imagery as part of the experience? Yeah, well, on the DSLR part and the high quality photos uh, part, that's where we are, uh, an area of the market that we want to uh, provide for. So we have prof professional photographer on staff. Um, I've got an AR or A7R2 um, mm. with an eight millimeter seg Sigma and a nodal Ninja that we've um, been shooting around here. Yeah. Um, so we know the quality and we know, and I was surprised to f uh, find out how fast those cameras can um, pick up a, a shot. I mean, you're not talking about a minute per shot. You're talking about 15 or 20 seconds and you don't have to duck around, duck out of the scene to take a 360 photo. Whereas with the traditional 360 camera, um, it takes the photo in one blast. You got to, you got to hustle behind a door, take the snapshot and hustle back to get the camera. It's a lot of effort if you're not, um, you know, if you got a sprained ankle, for example, but with the, um, with a DSLR, you can shoot in about 15 or 20 seconds at high resolution. Sure, there's a little more post-processing, but you can um, build it as a batch and get things together um, pretty yeah. quickly and get a get a, uh, a nice tour built up. So we're definitely we definitely want to address that professional market for sure. Um, so if the arbitrary limit that we have is not not quite right, then we just need to need, need to up that up, mm -hmm. um, which I'm, which we most certainly will. I, I, I think what I'm hearing is um, uh, Cupix will, will support from the $120 360 camera all the way up to whatever the one-click 360 camera and then accommodate uh, pros like you, Mark, that are using DSLR workflow. That's, that said, Mark, you, you, you shot a mall. I imagine mm -hmm. it took you forever and a day. No, nah, not really. No. No. Got it done in the morning. Got it done in the morning. Yeah. That's amazing. 56 nodes shot in one morning, walked around shooting on a four meter tripod uh, in a lot of cases. So I can get above everybody's heads um, manually do it, rotating. The, I'm actually using a lighting tripod and I just manually rotate. I've got enough experience to know exactly how much rotation to hit, hit that 90 degree uh, point. And mm -hmm. yeah, go back and it's it, of course the processing time is where all the work is especially when you're dealing in a mall when you got moving people all over the place you know and you're shooting at long you're, aperture and you're, you're long stitching aperture. all of these by yourself you're stitching oh, them yeah, yourself yeah. um how, how do you feel about that stitching i actually don't mind because don't to mind. Me, i actually to me it's yeah i don't mind in the sense that i i know that i'm providing my client a high quality product and a positive and an experience when you're dealing with a large mall um, their brand is how good they look. I gotcha. But you know, if you could, if you could take those, uh, the, those images, well, I mean, it's still, you, you still have the, the part about connecting them all together. If you could upload them to the platform, have it all stitched yeah. together and deliver to you, is, is this get exciting to you? It does. I'll tell you that it's, if, if the stitching quality, if, if, you know, if they're, if I don't know, are you, are you actually offering a stitching engine? I don't no, believe no, you are. We're, really? we're working with equi rectangular. So you would upload that. You're okay. So they've got to be pre-stitched. That's yeah. so that's cool. So I, you know, to me, that's still fine because the fact is, is actually, I find that there's actually, as you said very well, a 360 cam, one shot cam actually presents sometimes more problems than opportunities because like you said, you got to run out of the shot. Um, sometimes there's something in the shot that you actually don't want. You want to wait that car to get out of the way because it's blocking the view, the, the front view of the, of the shop that you're doing. So those are issues that to me make really good sense where, you know, a DSLR actually is a better tool for the job, okay. um, you know? So really to me, having a higher level of quantity and control makes more sense. There are times when the opposite is true, where one shot, you want everything in one shot. How many 360s did you take? Was it 58 that I heard 60? 56. 56, so uh, Scott, do you want to talk about processing? You, you got 56, 50 meg images? Well, if you have 56, 50 meg images, then each of those, we're using uh, 90 degree rotations with the wide angle lens or using a narrow. I'm, I'm shooting with a 7D and a Sigma 8 mil, the same lens you're okay. using. Yeah. So I would, if I were to estimate that 56 photos take about 
if you're working fat on a tripod, that's going to take a little more than 20 seconds. So let's say 30 mm -hmm. to 40 seconds per. Yeah. So you should be done in about a, about an hour or two. Right. Yeah. I, like I started, I, I started shooting at roughly about 7 30 AM and walking around, navigating the people, um, actually having the, the, the marketing manager of the mall, uh, basically being my, you know, call her, call her the bodyguard, making sure people didn't trip, trip on the tripod. Um, that, that was all of, I was out of there by 10 30. Yeah. Yeah. So relatively yeah. fast with all those people. Yeah. With, uh, sure. our, if you're really concentrated and you're really, really focused, I mean, you, you're hitting times of about 15 or 20 seconds per, per panel, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Uh, a little bit of walking and mm -hmm. that's, that's quite fast. Um, and then yeah. on the post-production, Scott, um, so are you using PT GUI, Mark? Or yes. Okay, yeah. so you've probably got a batch builder set up with a predefined template. And so if you're stitching four, four photos together, that's about 15 to 20 seconds per photo. But mm -hmm. at that point, you're just drinking coffee. So it's not really not really time that's, that you're eating. So yeah. another half hour for processing, uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes for processing. Mm -hmm. And once mm -hmm. you're done with that, you just upload the panels. Um, they can be mm -hmm. 30 megabytes, 50 megabytes, 100 megabyte panels. Um, we've got yeah. a really robust uploader. So you just upload mm -hmm. them to QPix and probably about uh, with 60 photos, probably it'd probably take about two to three hours. If it was only a 30 panel, it'd probably take uh, you know mm -hmm. half an hour to an hour. Right? So, okay, not not too long uh, to get those. Sure. Across. Yeah, you're probably familiar with a, a platform that Al Bug has developed called Go Through. I don't know if you know those, if you know Al or not, but that's what I've been using for actually publishing to, to stream okay. you. Um, and and then I use Walk Into from Bonnie Gopalan. Um, okay. for for all of the um, the custom tour layer stuff, which I was surprised to see that you're also including a lot of those types of features in there. That's actually you know really brilliant. Uh, especially, I'll tell you one of the things that I think is actually really important to do with 360s is I I'm beginning to include a short video to add at the front end of the virtual tour to help explain how to use the virtual tour because most people they don't even know what a sandwich menu is still you know so you got to yeah. tell them that. Uh, you know, so we got to dumb it down, which is just really, really important. Keeping the language and, 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 you know, just point, just make it simple for people to know what's going on. So, um, so seeing that you're actually able to Im embed YouTube is actually a brilliant idea more for the purpose of the explainer video at the front mm -hmm. end, things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so, really yeah, so yeah, so yeah. That's yeah, that great. Was... Leon, I'm going to come back to you in a moment. Uh, Scott, hang on one sec. We, we, we have another, um, uh, uh, um, we get around network forum member, uh, Carl, he's in the virtual studio audience. He's actually in the, in the UK, Leon, I know you're there. You're on, you're on camera. Uh, uh, um, uh, Carl asked not to be on camera, but he's, he's been sending me a note here. Uh, this is what I read earlier. Uh, I'm totally blown away, already signed up, starting testing, game changing. Uh, and so he wants to know what the catch is any price expectation, um, so, uh, can, Scott, are, are, um, I don't think you're at the point to talk about pricing yet. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we're really not quite at quite at that point. Uh, we're we're not really openly discussing it in yeah. a situation like this. But if if you were if you were to uh, PM me, which is the we get around way of you know having the private conversation, or email email me, um, uh, then we would we'd be able to talk about mm -hmm. what our plans for pricing are, which are are really um, really quite attractive um, from everybody we, we talked to you um, including on the professional um, the semi-pro level where guys are um, bringing uh, point and shoot cameras that haven't really invested a lot um, in the hardware they're, they're so, so you can private message scott if you go to the we get around network forum yeah. you look for the topic wgan tv uh, cupix uh, update uh, scott's going to be posting to that you'll you'll see his uh uh, his uh, We Get Around Network forum name, you can click on it, you can private message him and then ask him questions if you want about pricing, but he's not ready to talk about it publicly. Scott, do you know when you're coming out of beta? Uh, it'll be, uh, be be some time. We need to wrap up some of these challenging features as, as useful as we feel the product is and as many companies that are actually using it in production to make money. Uh, we're reluctant to uh, charge until we're, we feel very comfortable with uh, some of the key workflows that we want to uh, want to wrap up. Um, so it'll be uh, once we get those wrapped up, we'll we'll, we'll be announcing pricing. Cool. So hopefully not too long. Okay. And uh, uh, Leon, um, did you have a, another question you wanted to ask? Yes. Um, I, I, I want to just get back to the um, 
what is the difference between the images captured by video versus uh, a camera? Is it, uh, does it take just snapshots of the video uh, that it uses for the uh, 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 application? Uh, we've, yeah, good, good question. So if you uploaded, uh, say, two minutes of video at 30 frames per second, that's um, it's something like 3,000, 3,600 or so um, uh, frames of video. So what we're doing is we're analyzing all of those frames of video, but we're present in order to construct the tour in order to figure out where the locations of um, the, the objects are in order to figure out um, the mesh so you can take measurements. So we're using all of the video data um, for that analysis, but what we're presenting are key frames that are of the highest fidelity, of the least blur, um, and with appropriate spacing. So even if we've got a bunch of frames that are, are really crisp in a certain area, it doesn't really present a lot of value to the user. So we're, um, we're, we have an intuitive way of chopping those down um, to present a, a usable walkthrough to the user. Um, but we're using all of the data. Okay, so I, I, I'm asking a leading question here. Um, sure. For example, I want to use the facility to create a, uh, a floor plan of a space. Uh, uh, and I just want to take the video through a space, sort of uh, like a la uh, iGuy does with a LiDAR. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to walk through a space capturing the data because my sole uh, purpose of it is to create a floor plan. How do I go go about that? Okay, yeah, very very much what we talked about. Um, I, I feel like I've been doing a little hand waving earlier on. So the first step would be to take the video and then upload it to Cupix, and then Cupix will give you a, a send you an email notification when the tour is complete. Um, so what we're looking at earlier with the videogrammetry that Kim in was holding the camera above his head. That's basically the only process that you'd, you'd have to use. Just walk through the space. Um, and collect the, uh, the area. The cameras these days auto expose. So if you work, walk into a darker area or a better lit area, the exposure is adjusted automatically with the video. And then what Keepix presents to you is that, um, that floor plan and that tour. And that floor plan is dimensionally, uh, qu quite accurate dimensionally. So you can um, trace directly over that floor plan and, um, and, then you're, and then you're set. So some of the things that um, you can also use the Cupix tour for in practice when you're creating these floor plans is to identify the color of a sink or the, the shape of a sink or the location of a washer dryer. Um, so if you're walking through a residence and you're able to construct all the, um, the walls and the, the doors and the windows, but there's some detail that you quite haven't quite figured out, you can use the first person Cupix tour view um, to fill in all those missing items. And, and in practice, that's, a, that's shown to be a very efficient way to create floor plans. Cool. Um, Scott, did you, did you have questions either for, for Leon or Mark? I, uh, not really. I, I, I enjoyed talking to, uh, I've met Leon before, so it's, yes. it's nice to see you again. And I enjoyed talking with you, Mark, and getting some of your insight from um, the professional level. As we, as I personally get more involved in uh, higher end photography, and my background has been um, in, in high end measurement, but a, a different different type. But I, as I get into this high end photography, I can really appreciate um, that you can get a lot done in a, a little time if you've got the right equipment. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Can, can, we, can we do one more picture, everybody? Everybody, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. So go on. We got to get. Uh, 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 let's see, Mark. I need more energy on that. Thumbs, thumbs up. Okay, big smile. Good. Okay, we got we got another thumbnail for one of our videos. Uh, uh, Mark, I'm I'm hoping that what you do is upload to Cupix with your. Um, uh, 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 shopping center and then mm. if your if your clients cool with it maybe to share a link with it in the form so we could see or if, if not at least write about the experience so that, that that we know what your workflow was like was it was that good helpful indifferent whatever sure that, yeah that cool. I, I, I'm actually more likely to do it with another tour that I've actually got up and coming simply because that one's already gone and it, it's done and dusted I've actually literally it's it's a delivery and I don't really want to muck with uh, you know, with that. So, 
Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, it might be a kind of an interesting side by side comparison to say, yeah, okay, quite. you know, this was this was yeah. my workflow. This is what it looked like as a final result. This is yeah. what it looks like in Cupix, and 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 does that change anything in your thinking in terms of your workflow of, yeah. of using uh, go through, mm -hmm. um, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, okay. there's, there's definitely, there's going to be some, some, I've actually got a couple of jobs lined up anyway, where this is going to be like, I've actually got a, a, a fitness center, which is quite a large facility that I'm actually thinking this is going to be an ideal example of how to actually leverage this because it is actually going to probably stress the photogrammetry quite a bit because of all of the workout equipment that's in this space. It's going to really confuse it, but I'm curious to see how well it works with that. Um, because that's actually one of the challenges when you're dealing with in the Google Street View world is that we're actually shooting like the one I just did one this morning. Uh, by the way, and by the way, I'm in, I'm in Australia, so the time zones are totally different here. Um, the I just did one for a um, a skin clinic, a skin cancer clinic this morning, and I've actually got people, I've got um, um, actors in the actual shoot, so I've actually got to have people in the imagery. It's actually very important as part of what I actually do is to tell that story. Uh, so I, I have to think in terms of where is this going to best work and I have to figure out how can I stress it and find out what is going to not, you know, go over the line in terms of what, what, uh, what Cubics can handle. And I, and I think you joined the, we get around network forum as part of your research to decide whether or not you wanted to buy a Matterport camera. Exactly. Um, based on what you've seen today. Mm -hmm. Probably still holding off, still holding especially off. after the news. You probably see, yeah. saw my comments a few days ago. Well, uh, we, we, we won't go there. We'll yeah. say that for tomorrow's uh, okay. You tomorrow, do that tomorrow's show, Scott. Yeah. Me, thank you, um, <laughs> Scott. Uh, why don't I give you the last word here? I know we've been going again almost two hours. Uh, thank you for hanging in there with us. Um, anything else you want to share before we go? Uh, we've been uh, bringing updates since we came out of public beta back in August on a regular basis. So we hope to wrap up the last bit of uh, features to have a really uh, satisfying product for a lot of industries. And hopefully we can do that soon um, for everybody's benefit. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having so me. Our, yeah. our guest on the program today has been Scott Anderson, the Director of Sales for Cupix, C-U-P-I-X. You can check out Cupix at cupix.com, cupix.com. Uh, we've recorded today's show. We'll uh, publish it in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, look for the headline uh, or just look for the keyword Cupix. Uh, we did almost two hours today. We did a two hours uh, Cupix for newbies also in WGAN. So if you're really interested in this topic, you got about four hours worth of videos that you can watch. Uh, and so uh, thanks Scott, thanks Leon, uh, thanks Mark. And I, and, I, and I know in our, uh, in our, our virtual audience, uh, Carl had his, uh, tells me he had his two thumbs up as well. So uh, uh, thanks all for joining. So, uh, and for all of you uh, who are watching, uh, uh, thank you uh, for watching WGAN TV live um, from Australia, the UK, Atlanta, and Scott, today you're in? I'm in Palo Alto this afternoon. Palo Alto, thanks, thanks all. Thanks. Thanks, Leon. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Okay, great. So I've, uh, I've, uh, y'all, I've stopped recording. S Scott, you may want to take off. I, I know uh, we've had you a lot. Uh, I'm going to actually, uh, uh, Mark, I'm going to talk a little bit about tomorrow's show on some of the stuff. So you might, if you want to hang in, that's great. Leon, if you want to hang in, that's great too. Okay. So I'm going to sign off. Thanks, Scott, guys. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, um, and I'm going to actually just re record a little bit here. So, hi all, I'm Dan Smakerod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Monday, February 26, 2018. We have a great show for you planned tomorrow, Tuesday, February 27th, 2018. Uh, a little bit of news out of Matterport in the last uh, five, six days. I, I pride myself in being able to read everything in the forum. I don't even know if I can keep up with the, the Matterport ecosystem kerfuffle. Uh, and so we're gonna have a town hall uh, uh, focused on Matterport ecosystem. There's been a lot of news. They're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. A um, lot of discussion. I'd really like to hear from everyone. Um, uh, uh, join us on the show uh, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, five o'clock Eastern time, uh, Greenwich Mean Time, minus five hours. That's uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, Tuesday, February 27th. A lot to cover. 
Uh, we'd like to have your visceral reaction to the news. Um, I'd like to know how this is going to affect you in some way, uh, if it does. And then I'd also like to have your recommendations. Let's let's leave it on a positive note. Um, you're the you're the, the the CEO of Matterport. What are you going to do to change things around? What are your recommendations? Um, I, I know Leon, uh, Mark, uh, you, you've been on the line here. Um, is, is there anything that you want to say at the at the moment, or you want to save some comments for tomorrow? I think I'm very curious to see what will actually be coming about and, and seeing who else has um, had similar feelings that I think all of us have. Um, having been one of those people who's held off on Matterport, as I mentioned, I'm actually kind of happy that I have uh, seeing this debacle. Um, but who knows? It, it Sometimes these are the best things that could possibly happen because it brings brings out the best in people when they actually realize that there's a, there's a community that's quite passionate about getting things right. So let's hope for the best. Leanne, you want to add to that? I, th I think um, Matterport and how they handle this is at a crossroads. Um, it's a matter of trust. And uh, it depends on how are they going to respond to this situation? Uh, uh, they can continue to blame somebody else uh, for the situation, or they can uh, do deep introspection and actually decide who their clients are. Now, Matterport, I I'm not sure whether they think that the Matterport service providers are their clients or whether they're trying to go for the consumer. And I think one thing is for sure, the Matterport camera, whether you like it or not, is not a consumer product. It's a professional product. It, uh, it requires a fair bit of skill to do it well. And it also requires a fair bit of skill in post-production and offering solutions. So it's not a one button solution as they would like to make it out to the end consumer. Uh, maybe I shouldn't go too deeply in it uh, tonight, but I, I feel quite strongly about it. When you, when you try so, and- so, so Leon, let's hold you there because okay. I, I, want, I want you to speak at length tomorrow, Tuesday about mm -hmm. how you feel, um, uh, you know, can, and what do you think Matterport should do? Can they regain your trust? Uh, uh, why somebody who's uh, like Mark, who's actually on the sidelines thinking about buying a camera, Mark, you know, what, what questions would you, not today, but what questions would you need answered? What actions does Matterport need to take for someone like you, a professional photographer who's been, you know, in the We Get Around Network forum, you're, you're studying the marketplace, you're trying to make a decision to buy, and, uh, and, 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 you've, and you said, I, I'm actually happy I haven't bought yet because I really need to hear that Matterport is a crossroads and what, what, action, uh, what action are they going to take? And so uh, I want to really feel like everyone has a chance to, to say their piece and then actually dis discuss among each other, you know, and follow up on everybody else's opinion. So that's, that's a, a WGAN TV Live at 5, uh, Tuesday, February 27th. 2018, uh, and our, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to make sure you come back, uh, the, the, the short URL, wgan-tv.com. That's wgan-tv.com. So uh, thanks, Leon. Thanks, Mark. Look forward to, to, to seeing you tomorrow. Leon, good evening in UK. Mark, good morning in Australia. And uh, I'm, I'm Dan from Atlanta. So uh, thanks all for tuning in. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Good to see you yes. and uh, in, enjoy your evening and your morning. Great. Thanks. Okay. Bye for now. Thank you. Good to see you. Okay. Bye.